Hey guys, what's going on? So I got a question uh, earlier today on uh, overtime and um, kind of wanted to give some clarity with this. Uh, somebody heading down to conduct a training school and they were just curious that their previous job they had, you know, an, an extra 30 hours a week sometimes. And then sometimes it was, you know, significantly more, et cetera. Uh, so they're trying to figure out how much overtime you actually get. Well, to kind of explain this, um, overtime is it's kind of relative because you are paid a per day wage and then any time you exceed a certain time there's there's kind of penalties for that so the fra has a 12 hour hours of service law which essentially means that at 12 hours it's kind of like pencils down you got to be done with whatever it is you're doing um it doesn't always happen because sometimes things occur it, it, it just is what it is but but 99% of the time you have to be done at 12 hours. Usually even the hour before your engineer is going to stop the train and they're going to call in and say, Hey, we need picked up uh, because we're, we're reaching limit. So uh, then they'll send out a new crew to replace you. They'll t put you in the cab and then they'll take you either to the hotel um, or you guys will ride in the second unit with that crew to wherever your train is heading. If you're on a road crew. Um, but typically it's, it's a 12 hour hours of service. So if you hit 12 hours every day for your six day stretch, you're on a six, two split. So six days on two days off and it rotates every week. Um, so if you hit those six days and you hit 12 hours each day, that's 72 hours a week, right? So that there is going to be, you know, whatever you consider overtime for the week, you can kind of do the math. Um, certain jobs have different time limits. So yard jobs sometimes are only uh, eight hours long um, and especially once you get to bid on some that they're they're pretty consistent they are eight hours every day some of those people work you know an eight to five schedule but they've, they've been here a very they've been with the company a very very long time uh, in order to do that uh, but sometimes you might as an extra you might get called in to work their shift because they called off or they might be on vacation sometimes you luck out that way um, during training, you are going to get $200 a day um, while you're at McDonald's for three weeks. You'll go through that entire process. You'll get 200 bucks a day the whole time you're there, uh, plus your meal stipend, plus your mileage reimbursement. I think the bonuses are still in effect, um, but that'll be the first three weeks. When you hit OJT, this was the recent train, change here, it's 25 bucks an hour for a minimum of $200. So if you work a 12 hour shift during that, that period, you're getting paid 300 bucks for the day because you're at $25 an hour. Um, in addition to that, when you hit uh, that 12 hour service limit, um, sometimes you are on a coal train for the day and you didn't even make it to your destination. The, your, your terminal might be seven hours away, but you're lugging that much weight. It's going to take a very long time to get there. And you're also a non-priority train. So they're going to run people around you all day. They're going to have you pull into a siding. They're going to, you know, send people around you the whole time. So, um, it just, it, it is what it is. It, sometimes you'll hit that 12 hours before you even get where you're going and they'll replace you and, and you kind of go from there. Uh, sometimes things happen while you're out there. Your train will go into emergency. You might, you know, might, break a knuckle you might you know have something that you can't fix if it's not if it's not a gasket an air hose um something that you can tape up uh to continue on if you can't bypass the air you know any of that kind of stuff um sometimes you have to sit there until somebody comes out to help or somebody comes out to replace you uh, so you might get into your your trip three hours and then just kind of sit there until they can get a replace either the replacement part out to you so you can continue or a crew to replace you once you hit your service limit um outside of that um, there's going to be some ride and glides occasionally. So, and again, this is all relative to your kind of terminal. Some, you know, some of your terminals may have all of these things. Some of them may not. Uh, so you might end up, you know, on a ride and glide for the day. So that's an intermodal mail train, uh, something like that. That's going to kind of, it's high priority. It's, it goes around every train that's out there. Uh, and let's say your terminal is seven hours away. They are going, you're going to get in your train, you're going to open your coffee, you're going to sit down, you're going to bullshit with your conductor, you're going to go seven hours, uh, enjoy the scenery, get out of your train, sign out at the terminal, go get your 10 hours of mandatory rest at the NS paid hotel, and then come back and bring a train home. Now, the train home might not be a ride and glide, but uh, it's happened, sure. Uh, so that's an option too. And, and it, again, it just depends on the needs of your terminal, the types of trains that are available, and also which which kind of call you get called for. So, um, you know, that, that's just kind of what it is. And that, that's really going to determine your your overtime for the week. It's, it's what you get put on. The longer you're with 
a railroad, no matter no matter who it is, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to bid on jobs that you like, um, that you like the schedule of or, or that you like the pay of. So the thing that people are always pushing towards, I want a better quality of life, I, I want to work, uh, work a little bit less, you know, that kind of thing, be home with a family, cool. Then we've got some guys that are going to be, you know, they're single, they don't really have too many responsibilities, or they're divorced, and, and they're married to the job. Absolutely, those guys want to be on whatever's going to pay them the most money. Um, so once you get here, you're going to be able to bid on certain jobs. So you might want to bid on a job that is, you know, standard Monday through Friday, eight to five. Or you might want to bid on road trains that you're going to be gone, you know, your full service limit. Uh, you're going to get held away pay when you're at the hotel. Uh, you know, all collect all of the additional benefits for the inconvenience. The railroad doesn't pay you for the work. They pay you for the inconvenience of your time. So, uh, you know, like I said, it, when you get down to it, you do sometimes exceed that 12 hours trying to get to your away terminal um, because there might not be a taxi available. You might have to ride in that second unit and finish that train ride. You're not working, you're sleeping in that time period, but you know, you still have to to continue on there uh, and, and you get paid for that inconvenience for the the, time, the hours and the time above your, your standard work day. So hopefully that's a little bit clearer. Um, again, it's going to be terminal by terminal based and, and job by job based, but the, the biggest thing is, is, is just to make sure that you stay safe out there, you know, work the amount of hours that, that you can do safely. And I hate to say this, but don't be afraid to call off, um, especially after you're done with your training uh, and you finish OJT and you start getting out there as an extra board conductor, it's real easy to get burnt out really, really quickly. So uh, if you start getting into your fifth and sixth day and you start, you don't feel that you can perform your job safely, call in a dispatch, take the day off, give yourself 24 hours, you know, and then, and then mark back up as soon as you're done. Uh, in addition to that, if you're sick, uh, especially with, with these COVID times here and things like that, you know, don't go hopping on a train with a guy. You're going to be in an, you know, a 12 by 12 box for 12 hours. You don't want to send that home with them, them and their family. So if you have COVID, don't go into work. <laughs> uh, you know, that would seem like common sense, but common sense is not so common these days, but hopefully that answers your question. Any questions in addition, comment down below. I'll answer them as soon as I possibly can. Appreciate you guys being here. And um, again, remember there's a YouTube channel for things like this, trying to grow that side of it. So if you're not subscribed, head over there. And uh, again, I'll answer any questions you can. Longer form stuff is going to be over there, short form here.